hands on from beginning to the end. Whenever you go in the public and you perform activities, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. Like sure you know that. Yes, yes, you can tell with the and, program. Yeah. And that's a great part of what I do. Okay. As a as a active member of Breakthrough Prayer Ministries, we collect clothes okay. from anyone who's willing to give. We make sure that that's organized. Mm -hmm. um, there's someone who has to go out and purchase the food that we give away or, or purchase the gift cards and put those together. So I'm a, a great part of the behind the scenes as well as, you know, when you work for God, yes. you have got to, it, it has to begin with prayer. Right. So right. I am very active with our prayer ministry. Okay. Uh, we fast on a regular basis. Okay. We go before God. And, and when we go out, we ask God to go before us. Okay. So I'm very active with, with praying and helping behind the scenes, as well as when we go on site to the the public housing units. Yes. Um, I talk with the with the residents that are there, okay. help serve the food, and just okay. there to minister and and also assist my husband. Uh, so it's not always easy, but whenever you have a person who's doing the work of God, like my husband. You have to have people praying for them. And so yes, God true. has just really laid it in my heart that I have to keep my husband lifted up in prayer. Well, that's good. That's good. We need that. Now, are the people receptive, uh, receptive when y'all? Oh, very. Let me just say this right. We have a very unique ministry from this perspective. Um, our ministry is made up of people who attend different churches. You have to belong. You have to be a believer in Jesus Christ. You have to be baptized. And you have to belong to a church. And if you join us and you don't, are not a member of a church, then we try to help you matriculate into a church. So we are an interdenominational Christian outreach ministry. So we, on Sundays, we're in our own individual churches. Mm -hmm. But we come together, like over the last two years, we've been doing a different apartment complex every quarter. Okay. So four times a year. Next year, we're going to do it every other month. Okay. And so we come together throughout... Uh, the year to do these projects in the projects. Okay. And so what we what we so it's a very unique ministry, and we also have a website. It's uh, www.minuteforministry.org, okay. and it ministers to over 100 countries around the world. We get emails. Before and uh, I didn't mean to cut you off, at the end of the program, we'll have that website uh, running without credit. So if you didn't catch that at the end of the program, we'll make sure we have it posted. Quick, go ahead. So what, what we do is not only do we minister here in town, but through the web we get to minister to over 100 countries yes. around the world. We get emails and prayer requests from South Africa, Asia, Bahrain, uh, China, okay. and uh, so we respond to those. And on that website you can actually see testimonies that are posted from people who have been uh, prayed over by the ministry, taken oh, through the deliverance. Good. So it's a local ministry, but it has an international outreach through the internet as well. Okay, now we spoke earlier um, in the week, and you mentioned uh, um, healing and deliverance. Yes. Uh, can, you, can you expound on that? Yeah, the name, the, the way that we got this name <laughs> was we were just going out doing the work. We were having a Friday night uh, healing and deliverance services and stuff like that, and people were getting major breakthroughs. And what we, what we mean by that is Jesus promised in Mark chapter 16, yes. he says, go into the world and preach the gospel. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that does not believe shall be damned. And he says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. If you believe, you're gonna see signs. And so we believe, so the signs follow the belief. Casting out demons, yes. you can do that. Uh, the Holy Spirit uses us to do that. That's the correct way to say it. Uh, laying on the hands, and we see people healed. Um, right before our eyes. Okay. And uh, so that kind of spiritual warfare, but there are different levels of spiritual warfare. That's interpersonal warfare, but you also have levels of warfare on the community level, the citywide level, metropolitan level, state level, national level, and international level. So those are levels of, of warfare that most people have no idea about. So this ministry gets in it from that perspective as well. Well, give us an example uh, uh, what one weekend when you go out to the project, when you go out to the homes to minister and deliver and to serve. Give us an example, one that's really have uh, uh, captivate your mind and say that I know this is God. Okay. Well, just last month, uh, we went to uh, Hilltop Village, which is on 45th Street. And uh, uh, we typically, you know, once the people shop and we feed them and everything, uh, I typically teach for 20, 30 minutes. 
Well, this particular day I was teaching on that the fact that God promised us mm -hmm. that he would heal us if we believe in him. Okay. And so I was teaching on uh, Mark chapter 11, verses 22 through 26, One of my favorite which scriptures. basically said, Have faith in God, for verily I say unto you that whoever says unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea. And if you do not doubt in your heart, but you believe that those things that you say shall come to pass, you shall have whatever you say. Yes. So I taught on that scripture, and I, and I invited, and we're talking about maybe 200 people out and, and about. I said, now, Is there anybody in, out here who has any problem? Come on. And I remember my wife told me after she was scared. She was like, well, what if somebody comes up and what if you pray and what's about to happen? Well, see, I don't worry about that because I rely on the word. The word says, these signs shall follow them that believe. So yeah. I hang God out there. And I said, well, who made this promise in Mark 11? They said, God. Yeah. I said, did God promise to heal you? Yes. What's your responsibility? I believe. Okay, so if I believe God promises to heal. Right, right. So I hang God out there. So a lady comes up. She has a swollen knee. She comes up with a cane. She has a swollen knee. And um, so I, I had a microphone, so I took her off the mic, and I said, well, you know, tell me, who are you holding in the spirit of unforgiveness? Because the Holy Spirit told me she has some unforgiveness. So she said her brother. She said she hadn't spoken to her brother in about two years because of something he did. I said, okay, well, you won't be healed until you release your brother from the spirit of unforgiveness from the heart. Mm -hmm. Now, she's not on microphone. Nobody else hears me telling her this. So she says, okay, I can do it. So I walk her through a prayer, releasing her brother, asking God to forgive her for holding her brother in the spirit of unforgiveness. Yeah. See, most people forget that behind the Lord's prayer, Jesus said, if you do not forgive your brother, neither will your father forgive you. Right. So I took it to that scripture. So she forgave him from the heart. Tears came from her eyes. I said, okay, now, 